Hi everyone. We will be continuing our PLC learning series looking at outputs. Now PLC outputs are the next component of our PLC block diagram. The outputs of the PLC will be controlled by the PLC program. Controlling outputs is one way to get the inputs to change. We will be looking at digital and analog outputs that can be wired to the programmable logic controller. So detailed information contained in the video can be found at accautomation.ca. A link has been put in the description below. If you have not watched the other videos yet, there will be links in the, the description below that will start you at video 1. There will be links to the rest of the videos in the series as well. So what are PLC outputs? Well, the term PLC outputs usually refers to the physical devices connected to your programmable logic controller. Outputs are usually isolated from the CPU of the PLC through light. This isolation is the reason that if an output is destroyed, the PLC can still function. Usually the output can be corrected and a new output card placed on the PLC. Alternatively, the output can be corrected and the PLC output can be programmed for another output address. So note that you must refer to the specifications of the manufacturer to determine how the outputs are protected. Now these output devices allow the PLC to perform action and control the inputs if the feedback uh, is, is for the output. So lights, relays, solenoids, speed references are just a few examples of PLC outputs. Operators, operator outputs through a human machine interface or HMI are also a form of PLC outputs that we'll be discussing later. Physical outputs are what we'll be looking to wire and understand now. So the first thing what we really must do is go to the actual specifications of our uh, controller that we're going to look at. And we are currently going to look at the uh, BRX Do More PLC itself. And you can see on here, if I look at my outputs, we have output type syncing. We have eight total. Uh, you see we have two common points, four points per common. They're isolated. Like I said, that's the light that, that's shared between CPU and the output. Our rating is 12 to 24 volt DC. The operating voltage range is 5 to 36 volts DC. Now the maximum voltage is 36. And your minimum output current that you have to draw on that would be 0.1 milliamp. And the maximum current is 0.5 amps per output. So that means that you can have half an amp or 500 milliamps per output um, on that side. So that is the output specifications for digital or discrete. And then we have our analog output here. So our output module has one output and our output is actually scalable for all these different voltage ranges. The minimum voltage load or impedance is one kilo ohm and our maximum current load impedance is 500 ohms. That, that makes sure that our, our, an, our analog that we're pushing through that output is restricted. And then we have our analog output wiring. So that is the specifications of our, our PLC. Now the other thing that we have to uh, look at is the difference between discrete and analog. Now, discrete and analog outputs are usually the method to specify the PLC itself. The physical number of discrete outputs and analog output outputs help to determine the size of your PLC or ability of the PLC. Discrete or analog outputs refer to an on-off uh, input type or in which they only have the two states. And analog outputs refer to a range or expression and express a unit specified by the device. An example would be like a voltage reference for a variable speed drive, like a VFD. A voltage can be uh, sent to the drive to determine the speed or frequency to operate. Now these analog outputs are usually be scaled and this will aid in the readability of the program. So in our example, we will scale a variable zero to 60 Hertz to represent a zero to 10 volt DC signal. So let's uh, first look at our uh, discrete uh, digital outputs and as mentioned before they're either on or off. Think of these as switches that control the load. Now if the PLC um, output is off the switch is open. 
The electrical circuit is not complete, so the load is not energized. If the PLC output is on, the switch is closed. The electrical current is complete, so the load is energized. And it is important, as we saw, to look at the switching capacity to determine that the load will not exceed the limit. So what we can do is actually look at our um, load that we're going to put on here. We're going to control two lamps, two LED lamps. So if we look at our Fuji LED lamps, you can see that if here on our DC, we're going to be the current consumption is 11 milliamps for each one of these. We have two of them. So we have a total of 22 milliamps to control. Now remember we can have 500 milliamps per common or two amps per uh, total circuit on that, which we're well below. So we're good for the amperage itself. So it's always good to check that load and make sure. And so let's take a look at um, the next thing here, what you'll notice is on our block diagram, we have um, syncing outputs. Now, what does syncing and sourcing actually mean? Well, sourcing and syncing refers to the direct current, or DC, of the wiring of the PLC. The PLC output acts as a switch for the output uh, point circuit. So if the common of the output point is plus voltage DC, then the load is sourcing. It is also referring as plus or positive switching. Now, if the common of our output is zero volts DC, then the load is sinking. This is also referred as minus or negative switching. Looking at the reference of the PLC output point will determine sinking or sourcing. And the common practice is to have the entire PLC either sourcing or sinking for both the inputs and outputs, so the PLC, so the outputs are usually fixed. This will dictate how the input should actually be wired. Now, looking at our outputs, you can see that the common for the output is zero volts DC. So these are syncing outputs. But again, always make sure you check the manufacturer specifications before wiring the PLC itself. So let's right now take a look at our hardware that we have here. So here is our uh, Bricks uh, Do More PLC. We see we have two um, push button LEDs and we have our multimeter here to take a look at troubleshooting or to looking at how these uh, signals actually work. And as we mentioned before, the PLC troubleshooting becomes easy when you think of every output as an individual circuit. And we can measure the voltage across the PLC output or the switch and can quickly determine if the circuit is correct or not. And we've used the uh, open and closed of our output to actually to do this. So let's first turn on our output and you can see here that I have my two leads they're connected to um, here's my positive here's my negative on my 24 volts so I read 24 volt if I see up my switches here we know that this is actually sinking because we have a negative supply to our common okay so here's my common up here and we have a negative supply to it and then we have our push button for green and our push button for red the red being normally closed, the green being normally open on our input side. So that's why we've just uh, had our lights directly uh, controlling those as we did last time. So if we take our uh, positive lead off here, because remember our negative is, uh, our negative is going to our common here. And we, we put this across the switch here. You can see that because the switch is open, I read 24 volt. If I were to now energize that switch, you can see I read zero. And similarly, if I go to my um, normally closed, you see that I read zero. If I energize that switch, I now read 24 volt. So remember that if I'm going across my switch here, so between here and here, if I do not have that open, or it's not open, then I read my potential, which is 24 volt. If it's closed, it's just like reading a straight wire. So I will read zero volt. So that's how we uh, take a look at that. Now, this will also be uh, the opposite if I were to take and look at my uh, actual load. So if I put that back on plus, 
and take my negative here and we go to our actual load so here is my load if I go to my negative or my switching side here my load I see zero volt if I look at my normally closed you can see here that was good here so you can see we see 24 volt so reading across the load itself here will be also be just the opposite so if the switch is closed, we read a signal because we have current going through that and we see that voltage drop. If the switch is open, there's no voltage drop, so it's zero volt. So that's how we can quickly determine whether our output is actually working or not on our discrete. So troubleshooting, again, refers is very easy. All you're looking for is the completed circuit, whether it be this one, this one, this one, or this one per common on that PLC. Now, the uh, analog uh, output converts a, a digital value that is stored and processed in the PLC into a voltage or current level. Now, standard industrial voltages, as we saw in our output specifications, are 0 to 10 volt, 1 to 5 volt DC, or 0 to 20 or 4 to 20 milliamps, and that's current. Now, analog voltage outputs are the most common. I believe this to be true because they are easy to wire and test with a multimeter. Zero to 10 volt analog is probably the most common, but there's the greatest risk of being influenced by no noise. If an analog current output, are, they're actually better for long distance run and are less prone to noise so that you can place, even if you're getting a, a jam, you can place a 250 ohm resistor on the analog output of a 4 to 20 current sensor and get a voltage output of 1 to 5 volt DC. Now this just uses Ohm's law that you can see and you can see how that works. But again, refer to your wiring diagrams um, for that analog signal and make sure you understand how that works. In our case here, this is the analog uh, output for our specifications and we actually are going to look at our voltage output here. So you see we just have a common and we have our um, output analog point. So our common will sit at zero uh, volt DC. So we are doing the same wiring diagram as we did with our, our, our digital outputs themselves. So let's just uh, take a look at the actual program. So here's my program. And they're the digital outputs that we've already selected. And a lot of times what we do is we just call up our uh, PLC, in this case here, our system configuration. We'll look at the local I.O. And we will look at our analog on board. And on our analog, you'll see that we'll go to our analog output. And we specified on here, zero to 10 volt DC. This is our resolution, it's a 15 bit. So what that does is it converts it into a digital signal and that digital signal is what um, makes up the resolution that we require. In this case here, we're doing scaling. So we're taking an output uh, or an input register RY0 and we're gonna say a minimum of zero volts represents a zero or a zero on the RY0 represents zero volts basically on our output analog and 60 um, on our RY0, meaning 60 hertz, represents 10 volts on our output. That's all there is to it. That's the scaling. And it makes, uh, it, in this particular PLC, it makes it quite easy. Sometimes we can have to do this in within the uh, uh, program itself. So now let's take a look at our analog. So again, we'll plug in our negative to see that we still have our 24 volt, which we do. And then we'll take our positive here, unhook it, and we'll attach that right to our analog output, which is coming in right underneath here. And you can see right now we have zero volts. Now let's uh, right in here 
60 to represent 60 hertz. You can see it automatically goes to a higher number, representing our 15 bits. And if we were to hit the output on here, you can see now that we read 10 volts for our analog output. And then we can do anything in between. So let's put in uh, 30. So this should give us half of half the output range, which re represents five volts. So again, check that output. And that's exactly what it's doing. It's giving us five volt output. So looking at the outputs, you can really uh, quickly troubleshoot using a PLC. Now, if you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button below. If you have any questions about the video, please leave a comment below and I'll do my best to answer it. If you want more information about us or you want our free ebooks on numbering systems or robust data logging, please click on the link in the description below to get it. A new video is put out every Monday, so make sure you hit the subscribe button so you get more videos like this in the future. Remember to click the bell beside your subscription to actually receive those notifications. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Stay safe.